I'm grateful for your generous wedding gifts. The appliances you gave me are truly appreciated. I had confidence in your support when it came to the major items. Of course, baby girl. Congratulations on your upcoming marriage. I wish I had the ability to offer further assistance. You don't have to thank me individually like this, sweetheart. As your mother, it was my pleasure to help. Well, thank you. But you're not. What? You're not my biological mother, I mean. Regardless, I wanted to express my gratitude and let you know that I appreciate you. What do you mean, baby? Did you think I didn't know? Did you believe I was behaving as a dutiful daughter all this time simply because I thought you were my birth mother? What are you talking about? Of course I am your mother. Please, don't feign ignorance with me. It's not becoming of you. Merely raising me for 28 years doesn't inherently make you my biological mother. Nurturing, clothing, and imparting knowledge to me for the past three decades doesn't make my genes magically yours. What are you trying to say here, Salim? Stop saying what it makes you sound so stupid. You had your fun, didn't you? Playing baby with someone else's child? Have you once thought about what my real mom had to go through? After she lost her baby to a stranger? All the while, here you were, pretending to be a great mom, playing dress up. Salim, what has gotten into you? Where is this all coming from? What is it that you heard? Who told you this, and what exactly did they say? I can't believe you're spewing out these awful hurtful things at me. Are you even thinking about what you were saying? Hurtful? Am I the one being hurtful? What about you stealing a weak old baby from her mother? You don't get to tell me I'm being hurtful. Salim. Without your involvement, my biological mother could have married daddy and we could have formed a genuine, complete family. If it weren't for you, I would never have had to grow up with a fake mom. My poor birth mother had to go on living her life with her heart broken into a million pieces, and I ended up living this humiliating pretend life. All because of you! Salim, you have got this all wrong. I didn't steal you as a newborn from anyone. I would never do that. That is beyond a felony. Your birth mother brought me to you, and she handed you over to me. She said she wasn't going to raise a child as a single mother. She vowed to never show her face again as long as I took you in and raised you as my own. Then your poor birth mother even demanded money in exchange for you, like I asked to take you away from her. I offered, of course. But who does that? It was like she was selling you to me. Giving her a little money was the least you could have done for her. She gave you her baby for God's sake. Have you been sore about the donation all these years? Have you been keeping a score or something? This is really trashy. And you wouldn't even have taken me so eagerly if you weren't bearing yourself, would you? So don't give me any of that oh I raised you with my hard crap because you didn't do it for me. You did for yourself. You did it to satisfy your own selfish greed of being a mom and a wife. To fulfill your ideal of a perfect family. You probably pretended your butt off so you could appeal how perfect a mom and wife you are to daddy. Sweetheart, I have never once thought of you as anything other than my own daughter. I considered you a miracle gift from God. I spent the last 28 years being nothing but grateful and tried my best to show that gratitude through raising you. And boy, am I proud of the woman you've become. You're just stressed right now from all the wedding craze. I can understand, but enough is enough. Always on the high horse, Anne. Aren't you? Why don't you step down for one second and try to be in my mother's shoes? Step out of your fake little happy world that's being my mom and see what the rest of us are going through. What the rest of us had to go through. If you have the least bit of decency, you will know where I'm going with this. I am not your daughter anymore. 
I will not act the part, or any other fake parts you try to force on me. So don't bother coming to my wedding, don't bother sending me emails. Just stay out of my life, I'm done with you. I am starting a new life, and I would love it if you were no longer in it. Okay? Salim. How long have you known that I wasn't your birth mother anyway? And who told you about it? Oh, now you ask. Daddy told me all about it, maybe three years ago. Yeah, that sounds right. It was when I just met Sake. Daddy, my real mom, Sake and I would go out to eat together and go shopping every now and then. You really had no idea? What? Are you serious? I can't believe your father would do that. Well, serves you right for thinking you could tie daddy down by having a baby. Any baby, that is. We all know you wanted nothing but to use me as a bargaining chip to keep daddy for yourself and provide for you. Did you really think building your happiness on other people's sadness would not have its consequences? As I already said, I did not steal you away from your birth mother, Salim. You have to believe me. And I provided for myself as much as your father did. I didn't have to depend on him entirely. Yes, I am unable to have children of my own. But that is not at all the reason I raised you like you were. Your birth mother, she threatened to discard you at some orphanage like a piece of garbage, her word not mine, if I didn't take you. And, to my eternal shame, I did think about letting her do what she said. Because after all, she was your father's mistress, and you were their illegitimate child. But sweetheart, I took you in because I loved you from the moment I laid eyes on you, and your tiny little fingers wrapped around my thumb. I didn't think twice about what it meant to mother your husband's child he had with a mistress, because I fell in love with you so deeply and so utterly. How you came into this world did not matter anymore. Just that you did come into my world. Can't you understand that, baby? Oh. Look at you writing up a tearjerker novel. What do you think this is, Hollywood? Take your soppy fake story and go away. Leave me alone. I already confirmed my birth mother coming to my wedding. As my mom, of course. And daddy should be sending over the divorce papers soon, too. So. Divorce? What? Oh. Why are you being so slow? Daddy told me he's never forgotten about my birth mother, his true love. He couldn't leave you because you were so adamant about giving me a proper childhood with loving parents and all that crap. But now that I am a grown adult who can take care of herself, he's finally opening his eyes to possibilities, I guess. To go after his own happiness. See? If it weren't for you, the three of us could have lived happily as a real family. You tore us apart. You shattered our future together, and you've had your share of fun. It's time to set things right, Anne. So leave us be, and if it turns out it's your turn to spend the rest of your life in sadness and regret, then deal with it. My mom surely did for long enough. All right. If this is what you truly want, I'll leave you to be with your real parents. Mind you, I'll have to cancel the $30,000 charge on my credit card for the things I ordered off your registry. And I'll have you and your daddy's belongings packed up into suitcases or something and leave them by the door. Come get them and go on off to wherever it is that you want to go off to. Wait, what? Cancel this stuff from my registry? Why would you do that? Those were for my wedding? Why would you cancel gifts from a registry, mom? M-O-M? I thought you didn't want me to be your mom, let alone think of me as one. If I could, I would get a refund on everything I spent in the past 28 years, raising you. But since I can't do that, I'm only canceling the gifts that I mistakenly purchased for a wedding I'm apparently not even invited to anymore. Oh, your honeymoon was reserved with my credit card, too, wasn't it? And your wedding venue? What about the catering service? Flowers? Photographer? I believe there was a videographer, too, in there somewhere. 
I wonder what the last-minute cancellation fees for those places will amount to. Orly not a drop in the bucket, compared to what I've gladly spent on you your whole life. Oh my god, that's so petty! You can't take back gifts? Who does that? You got me those things because you wanted to, didn't you? There are no take-backs. How do you call yourself a mother? It's your only daughter's wedding. I thought I couldn't call myself a mother. Isn't that what you were telling me? You can run along your precious birth mother and ask her for help, why don't you? Surely she can help with the venue, and the food, and the photography, and the honeymoon? Since she loves you so much and has never had the chance to show it, surely she will jump at the chance. Wow, so there it is. You did think of me as a stepchild, didn't you? Your words say you love me like your own, but your actions speak volumes about how you really felt all these years. You kept a tally of the money you spent on me? Seriously? Would you have done that if I were your real, biological daughter? You know what? Fine. My mom can cover the venue and honeymoon. Jake probably has some money saved up, too. We don't need your help. All we need from you now is to sign those divorce papers. You got it. The sooner the better. Yes, it is as you just witnessed. After a childhood accident, I became physically unable to conceive a child. But when my husband brought his child that he had with his mistress, I took her in and raised her as my own for almost three decades. What woman on God's green earth can easily forgive her husband for his infidelity, adultery, and also be able to accept his illegitimate child under her wing? Don't get me wrong, I didn't think I could either. And in a way, I'm uncertain if I ever did forgive him. But all that mattered was, in that moment I laid eyes on what must have been nothing but a lump of flesh, and she opened her eyes to look into mine. I touched her hand with mine, and she wrapped my thumb around with her tiny delicate fingers, she was my own. God works in mysterious ways, I thought to myself. This perfect child was sent to me from God, so that she could be mine now I could be hers. I believe that blood was thicker than water, but love was stronger than anything. My Selene brought me happiness I'd never imagined before. That moment when she first called me Mama, when she took her first steps. When she would eat the food I prepared for her like it was the best thing in the whole world, as she would walk holding my hand, when she gave me handmade artwork on Mother's Day. She had been filling my once empty heart until it overflowed with the kind of love I'd never felt before. I never imagined she'd one day come to say those hurtful, horrible things she said today. My husband quickly admitted to his ongoing affair with Selim's birth mother, and my 33 years of marriage to him came to an abrupt close. Immediately after returning home from the courthouse, I threw their belongings into any box I could find and left them outside my door. As I was working through the shock of seeing my half-empty house for the first time, I received a text from my now ex-husband. Hey, where are you? My keys aren't working, and neither is my garage opener. Did you already replace them? That was quick and... Good on you. I brought a KFC bucket and some beers, your favorite. I thought you and I were overdue for a chicken and beer date night. Open up. Anne. Deny, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be with your daughter and true love by now? You know, the woman who makes your heart ache by just thinking about her. The woman who you had a child with? The woman whom a few days ago you gave everything else up to be with again. Did you forget? What are you doing here with chicken and beer at this ungodly hour anyway? I'm done with her. I left her. We're over. I finally realized there is no woman like you, Anne. You're the kindest, the most patient person I know. I was immature and naive to let you go. I hurt you. I know. I'm so sorry. And I never showed you how much I appreciated you for all you've done for this family. You've forgiven me once before. Can't you do it again? I'll change. I promise. I'm a victim here, too, by the way. That which was so full of it. She didn't want me. 
She never wanted me. She was just using me this whole time so she could tag along when I take Salim out to eat or go shopping so that she herself could get what she wanted. I may have bought her a handbag or two, but that's it, I swear. She's even got a young boyfriend she's seeing. She doesn't want to marry me and settle down, she said so herself. She's the absolute worst. I love you, baby. Come on! She may be the worst, but she's Salim's biological mother, isn't she? Surely she wants her baby back in her life and wants to build some kind of belated relationship with her? I heard she was attending the wedding and everything is mother of the bride. The optics aren't bad right now, deny. The optics, yes. But it's not that simple, and She was only going to attend the wedding so she could sit through the wedding gifts and see what she could claim for herself. You know she demanded to be paid to come to her daughter's wedding? I had to wire her $10,000 two weeks ago. She made me cut all ties with you, abandoning everything I own with you like my house and my clothes. Then she left me high and dry. Salim and I went to see her after the wedding with all our suitcases, and she shut the door in our faces. We didn't even get to see inside of her house, and... Can you believe that? What mother does that to her own daughter? Me, I understand, but her daughter. Are you gonna sit and take this for our Salim? She's heartbroken right now. You'll say something, and... Salim made it abundantly clear that I am not her mother. In one single conversation, she took away all my hard work and dedication as her mother and basically erased me from her world. I realize now that trying to hold on to her was like holding on to a fistful of sand. No matter how tight or hard I try to keep all the sand in my hand, it will find its way out between my fingers. But you were happy being her mom, weren't you? You loved her with all of your heart. You still love her, I know you do. Even if Salim and her youth, it raises 28 years of her life with you, surely you can't. I did have some great times with Salim. I sure did. She was my everything. But the accusations she hurled at me, they were cruel, deny. That side of her didn't come from my nurturing. It's her nature. It's the nature of your mistress. I can't get past that, at least not just yet, deny. Maybe a real, biological mother could have easily forgiven her daughter for something like this. So I guess I'm no better than what Celine thought of me. Because in the end, I'm not her real mother. Mom, it's me, Celine. I'm so sorry, Mommy. Can you please forgive me? I know what got into me. If you let us back in, I will never think or talk about my real mom ever, ever again. I'll be the best daughter to you, the kind of daughter you deserve to have. I promise. Please, Mom. We have nowhere else to go, Mom. Daddy and I will come inside and beg if you want us to. Please let us in, and you can help me with my wedding plans again? Remember how fun that was? Let's go to the mall together, just you and me, like good old times. We can stop at the food court and get some cheese fries like we used to. I miss your meatloaf, Mom. I miss your awesome meatloaf with real breadcrumbs. Will you teach me how to make it? I want to pass it down to my kids, too. It'll be an heirloom recipe. If I learned anything from this whole ordeal, it is that I wasn't as big a person as I thought I could be. I cannot find it in me to forgive you too for what you've done. I guess I am but an evil stepmother like you said, after all. Our relationship ends here, Salim and Denai. Thank you for the many, happy memories you've allowed me, the past 28 years, Salim. Whether they were real for you or not. I will cherish them forever because they were real to me. I will try to keep only the happy memories of you. But now it's time for you to leave me and never come back. Don't make this any messier for us. Goodbye, Salim. The determined father and daughter pair relentlessly pounded and struck the door until I dialed the police, 
resulting in the arrival of two patrol officers to address the situation. Salim's fiancé, Jake, along with his family, openly expressed their disappointment over the abrupt cancellation of the wedding venue and the forfeiture of the honeymoon payments. Furthermore, they even proposed temporarily halting all wedding arrangements and contemplating the future of the union. In the end, and rather swiftly, Jake ended the relationship with Selim just days before their scheduled wedding. Selim sent me a barrage of curses via text, blaming me for the breakup and demanding that I resolve the situation. Despite my usual inclinations, I disregarded her messages and phone calls. If there is anything that requires fixing, it is myself and the need to reclaim my own life by excluding her and her father from it. It is long overdue for me to live the remainder of my life in freedom, dedicating it solely to myself and the pursuit of my own happiness. In a sense, it saddens me to have devoted my best years to raising a child who had no choice but to evolve into a monster like her biological mother. Nonetheless, I have no regrets, because, ultimately, Salim has taught me the kind of love that I will persistently seek in my life's journey. Natalie, we need to talk. What's wrong, Mom? About your high school. You said you want to go to the private school in the other city, right? Yeah, Mom. I really want to go to that school. You know that school is a bit far from our home? I know it's a bit far, but it's such a great school. They have an amazing cheerleading team and I want to be a part of it. Their uniform is so cute too. All right, Natalie. Then let's go check out the school next week and ask about the enrollment. Really, Mom? But you said I can't go to that school because I'll have to wake up real early. And you don't want to have to wake me up every morning. I thought you weren't going to ever let me go there. What changed your mind, Mom? You won't have to wake up too early if we live close to the school. It won't be a problem anymore. I won't have to wake you up and you can walk yourself to school. So getting to class on time will be your responsibility. Just you and I? I mean I'd be happy to be living close to the school but what about Dad? Isn't he moving with us? No, Natalie. Your dad and I are thinking of getting divorced. We're thinking we should get divorced by the time you graduate from your current. After that, we can move to the area close to your high school. Just you and I, Natalie. Do you think it's a good idea? Why are you getting divorced, Mom? What's the reason? It's just that your dad and I had a big fight. We can't stay together anymore. We've had many fights before, but this one is just a bit too much. So divorce is the only solution we could come up with. Mom, could it be that the real reason you're getting divorced is because Dad cheated on you? How did you know that, Natalie? Yeah, I saw him holding hands with a young woman not long ago. I'm sorry you had to see something like that. It must have been shocking to see him with a woman. But this makes it easier to talk to you since you know the truth already. Your dad betrayed us by being with that other woman. You and I don't seem to matter as much to him anymore. That's why I thought it'd be a good idea for us to move to a different city away from here. Just you and I together. I'm not going with you. I'd rather stay here with dad. So if you still want to move to a different city you can go ahead but do that on your own. I'm not coming along. Don't bring me into your mess. Natalie, what are you talking about? Are you saying that you prefer to stay with Dad even though he betrayed us? That's what I'm saying. It's not something unusual. I see celebrities cheating on each other all the time. It's not a big deal. He might be cheating on you but he's still a good dad. He makes good money and buys me anything I need. Sure, but that's not all is it? He barely spends time with us anymore. Well if he wasn't making enough money that would be a problem. But he works hard and makes lots of money and that's good enough for me. I don't care if he doesn't spend a lot of time with me. 
Dad makes a lot more money than you. So there's no way I'm choosing to be with you. Are you saying that you're choosing which parent to go with just by their amount of income? Is that what you're really saying? I'm just 15 now. I needs to be financially supported by an adult. Am I saying something wrong? Well, then you should be picking me. What? Are you kidding? Natalie, work is different. You should know one thing. I know nothing, Mom. I already know that you only make little money comparing to Dad. I don't want to have to hear any excuses or lies from you. Just leave us alone and go live on your own. You're pretty much a housewife with no money. A housewife with no money? Is that how you see me? Sorry, Mom, but Dad told me everything. He told me that you two are thinking of getting divorced. And when you do, he told me not to go with you because I'll end up having to live dirt poor. I don't want to be poor. Did he really say that to you? I can't believe it. No matter what you say, I'm going to live with Dad. You can go ahead and move to a different city anytime you want. You don't have to wait for my graduation. Mom. I heard from Dad that you're getting kicked out by him. Apparently, he told you to get out of the house, is that true? Yes, he did. That's what he told me. That's why I started to pack my stuff and getting ready to leave. You seem really calm, Mom. I thought you'd be sobbing and whining about having to leave. Natalie, I'm going to ask you one last time. Are you sure you're going to stay with Dad? You really don't want to come along with me? Stop being so annoying, Mom. I already told you like a million times that I'm choosing Dad. Stop asking me that question. Do you understand that he just goes off and puts his needs before his family's? He cheated on me, Natalie. That's not what a decent adult does when they're married. You're old enough to understand the difference, right? I just want you to rethink. This is a very important decision before you regret it. Also, remember how your dad was never really there for you at any of the important life events. Yeah, but he always tried to make it up by buying me stuff. It's not all that bad. So, Mom, stop making it sound like he's a terrible person. Plus, what matters to me more is who has enough money to keep me happy. If that's what matters to you the most, then you should be coming along with me. What? You're a right minimum wage job. There's no way you make enough money to keep me happy. It's not like what you think, Natalie. Okay, Mom. Go start with your excuses again. I don't want to hear any of it. You should be more worried about yourself, Mom. Why should I be worried about myself? Because you should just let Dad be with whoever he wants, but stay married to him. Are you sure you're going to be financially okay if you divorce him? Why would I do that? There's no way I'm accepting your dad and his infidelity. How could you even say that to me? Well, I'm just worried about your financial situation after you get divorced. You're going to be poor without him. Stop being so stuck up and just realize that you need to have to live a good life. You should be begging him not to get divorced. Excuse me? Do you realize what you're saying? Let me ask you one last time. Are you going to be okay without dad? Don't worry about me, I'll be fine because I make 200000 a year. What? Are you joking? Thanks for worrying so much about me. I was worried you didn't care about me anymore. I'm glad to know you still care about me. All these years I raised you was not in vain. Mom, what are you saying? Did you just make a typo or something? You mean 20000 a year? There's no way you make 200000 Dad said you don't even make 20000 a year. You only make half of that. Dad told you that? Really? 
Yeah, he told me you only you only make 10,000 a year. He said you only make minimum wage and that's why your income is so little. But unlike you, dad makes 100,000 a year only by working four days a week. That's why he said that I'd be much better off with him than you. Okay, first thing you should know is that someone who can cheat on others is also a person who can easily lie to others. Don't believe anything your dad says. Your dad's making 100000 a year by working just four days a week? Don't make me laugh, Natalie. It's all a lie. He doesn't even have a job. What? What do you mean he doesn't have a job? You mean he's unemployed now? That's crazy. You seem to have believed everything your dad says, Natalie. But the truth is that he's not working at all. He stopped working three years ago when he quit his job. I worked hard because your dad won't work. And I ended up making $200,000 a year. I'm the one who feeds you and your dad not just by cooking. I'm the one who makes the money that takes care of everything in this family. And of course, including the things your dad bought you. How do I know you're telling the truth? Maybe, dad is telling the truth and you're lying to just win me over. If you don't believe me, why don't you go ask your dad? But he already told me the truth and you're lying. I'm 100% sure there's no way he quit his job. Dad's been gone every day from early morning until late at night. He was just in formal clothes whenever we left the house. That's just how he dresses. So that nobody thinks he's an unemployed. But the truth is he's been going to grandma's house every day. What? Why he visits the grandma? He was visiting grandma every day to take care of her. You've been so busy with school activities and hanging out with friends that you haven't visited grandma for so long. But I guess dad hasn't told you that grandma is not doing so well. Her illness is getting so bad that she can't take care of herself anymore. What? I didn't know about that. Why didn't dad tell me? But mom, dad's not being lazy and doing nothing all day. He's actually taking care of grandma. He didn't tell you because he didn't want you to know he's unemployed. But that's good that he's taking care of grandma. He shouldn't be ashamed of it. It's not an easy thing to do. I'm proud of him. That's what I thought of him too at first. Oh, what do you mean? Aren't you proud of him? I was proud of him for the first year he was actually taking care of her all by himself. But he put her into the nursing home two years ago and kept lying to me that he was still taking care of her. He was actually doing nothing for these past couple of years. He lied to me so that I wouldn't be asking him to get a job again. So he kept using grandma as an excuse to not looking for a job. Then what is he doing now? Does he still go to grandma's house? Yes, he just goes there and watches YouTube and plays video games all day long. He eats takeout pizza every day. He's living the life of a teenager's dream. And in the end he got so bored that he started seeing other women. What? I can't believe it. He's been using the money you worked hard to get to order pizza and go on dates with other women? Yes, but you still want to be with dad, right? I'll leave the house to you too. I hope you have fun living with your dad and your new mom. Mom. Please text me back right now. What's that? You seem to be in a hurry. Is something wrong? Just tell me. Please don't leave without me. I'm coming along with you. I decided to stay with you, Mom. I'll end up being poor if I stay with Dad. I don't want. I'm sorry I misunderstood you, Mom. So please take me with you. I thought you wanted to stay with Dad. I heard from Dad that you got a lawyer and you're going to take everything. He said he's going to have nothing left. Yes, I'm going to get him to pay for what he did. In the divorce settlements, it'll be taken into consideration how much he leached off me. 
I'm not a petty person, but I have no compassion left for that man. My lawyers will make sure I get everything. His parents also helped him keep his affair and about grandma being in a nursing home a secret. So I'm cutting off the money I've been sending monthly. Of course being divorced, I would have no reason to send it anyway. But they didn't know your father is unemployed. Because of that everyone is fighting with each other here. There are screaming and yelling right and left. Plus everyone is saying that they don't want anything to do with dad anymore. I'm sorry you're having to go through that. Dad didn't think you'd end up having to pay you so much money. He doesn't have a job and is not capable of paying a lot of money. He has to pay nothing or something like $5,000. He really thought I was going to take it easy? Even if he can't pay now he'll have to find a way to pay for all of it. I'm putting in a lot of money to sue him. I'm not losing this case to him. Not only did he think he had to pay you very little. He was planning on having us live at Grandpa's house. Then they wouldn't have to pay for rent and Dad's girlfriend has a job that pays pretty well. So he was thinking of relying on her financially. Wow, he was going to stay jobless even after he got divorced. He really doesn't want to work? His girlfriend didn't know that we were all going to live together at Grandpa's place. When she found out that Dad was intending on getting her to financially support us she got furious and left. Now we can't get a hold of her. She won't answer any of Dad's phone calls or reply to his messages. I'd be furious too if I were her. That man needs to get his priorities straight or he's going to lose everything. After that, Dad went to Grandpa to ask him to lend some money. Then Grandpa got angry saying that it's all Dad's fault that Grandpa is losing his monthly allowance. So Dad that he's no longer his son and kicked us out of the house. I guess nobody thought that telling lies to me would end up like this. They were all taking me for granted and now seeing what's happening to them? I'm not going to let anybody mess with me anymore. I don't want to end up being alone with my unemployed dad. He's telling me to drop out of school and get a job as soon as possible. There's no way he'd be able to pay for that private school. Can't believe that he's trying to get his daughter to work so that he doesn't have to work. How low can he think? I don't want to stay with him anymore, Mom. Let me be with you. Natalie. I don't want to take you anymore, after all. Don't you forget things you've said to me? I feel like all those years I raised you was lost in vain. I felt like not only your dad abandoned me but my own daughter did too. Please don't say that, Mom. I only misunderstood. I'm sorry. You only changed your mind because you finally realized that I have money and your dad doesn't even know. That's what I tried to tell you before so you could make the right decision. But you wouldn't believe me now you take your consequences for your decision. I'm not going to help you out. I think I spoiled you too much that you became like this. You need to learn the hard way so you can grow up to be a proper adult. If you're not going to take me back, then we have an idea too. We're going to get you to pay us $5,000 every month for child support. Dad told me that you're going to have to pay that much. Sure, but your dad and everyone else can't pay me the amount they're supposed to pay me. So I'll just subduct it from the child support money that I'm supposed to give to your dad. Which you know, it'll leave you with nothing for a while. How? I don't get it. That means we won't get any child support money forever. Yes, you should know that. Wait! You're really not going to help me? Sorry Natalie, but I can't do anything else. You need to learn a lesson after all. After that, I decided to file for divorce. According to the judge, the money my ex-husband is supposed to pay to Natalie will be deducted from the child support. Because of her father's unemployment, Natalie had to get a part-time job while she attended her local high school. She soon became rebellious and often got into trouble with the police. My ex-husband is about to find another girlfriend who makes a lot of money so that he can leech off of her. 
Of course, my ex refused to do any housework. Consequently, it soon caused constant fights between them. Well, that's what they deserved. My life now is so free and enjoyable. Hey, Mom, are you free? I want to talk about my wedding this weekend. Will you come? Hi, honey, I always have free time for you. <laughs> I am that because you don't have anything to do. Yes, and I will say that I have bought a new dress to come to your wedding. Why can I absent? It's going to be a really important day for the whole family. I wouldn't miss it for the world. What? Why are you so surprised like that? Yes, I won't beat about the burst anymore and I will say that I want you to make sure that you don't come. Please mom, I am begging you. Oh sweetie, I don't understand why you don't want me to come to your wedding. I have many old items I have gotten when I married your dad and I want to give it to you at your wedding day. I have waited for it for a long time. Of course I don't want you Tom come. I already tell the staff at the wedding ceremony that they will remove your seat in the hall. So if you come there you won't have any seat and become the useless part of my wedding. There isn't a place for you. And I think you know the reason why I want this. Are you serious? Who teach you behave like that? You even look down on your mom? Is this some kind of prank? Or you want to play a joke on me? Although it's not that funny. No, mom. I'm serious. This is not a joke. I want to tell you this a long time before but I'm afraid you will react like this. But I have no time, this weekend is my wedding I have to prevent you from going there. But Lucifer, why can you do this with your mom? A family member? How about your dad? Did you allow him to come? Yes, of course, I am so proud of my dad so I will bring him with as a deputy for my family. Are you saying that you're choosing which parent to go with just by their amount of income? Is that what you're really saying? Yes, you know my husband's family is very rich so. I am quite embarrassed if you go to my wedding, I don't have to tell them about you. Oh honey, the one who really love you will accept your real theft, no matter what you're rich or poor. Or no matter what your mom and dad doing. Just be yourself, sweetie. Yes. I don't care about what you think about me nad my family but I just don't want to bring you to my wedding. You know, you just stay at home and do housework. All the money in our family is dad's so I don't want anyone know about that. Also, I want financially supported from dad. Am I saying something wrong? Because I already know that you only make little money comparing to dad. I don't want to have to hear any excuses or lies from you. Just leave us alone and go live on your own. You're pretty much a housewife with no money. A housewife with no money? Is that how you see me? Yes, I don't want to have any poor people attend my wedding. All the guests will come is my partner, so I will be more confident to flex about my husband and then can enjoy my wedding in peace. I hope you understand what I mean. So if you come there you won't have any seat and become the useless part of my wedding. Let's face the facts that my dad pay all the bill in this family. You couldn't put up with the only time that dad had an affair and rushed yourself into getting divorced. As a result, you lost a very major source of income. Dad makes a lot more money than you. He works at a good company. His position was good there and most important of all. He had enough money to give me anything I wanted. Yeah, I saw him holding hands with a young woman. I'm sorry you had to see something like that. It must have been shocking to see him with a woman. But this makes it easier to talk to you since you know the truth already. Your dad betrayed us by being with that other woman. It's not something on Seoul. I see celebrities cheating on each other all the time. It's not a big deal. He might be cheating on you but he's still a good dad. 
He makes good money and buys me anything I need. Sure, but that's not all is it? He barely spends time with us anymore. Well if he wasn't making enough money, that would be a problem. But he works hard and makes lots of money and that's good enough for me. I don't care if he doesn't spend a lot of time with me. Dad makes a lot more money than you. So I chose him to come to my wedding not you. You are the one who made me unhappy. You took away my childhood when you decided to divorce with dad. You see, you had no right to attend my wedding at all. You got it? Oh my god! How dare you say such things! I'm so disappointed about my daughter! You have to understand me, haven't you? It would be very embarrassing to have you there, in the same room with such people. You just don't belong there. Do you realize what hurtful words you are saying to me right now? Maybe you don't. I pray to God that you don't. I mean we haven't met since I've graduated from high school. We haven't made the effort to see each other since then. You must have sensed that I didn't like you that much? Time flied and everything even me and my love for you. It's kind of obvious. You were the worst mother ever. Why can you forgive for my dad and then we will have the happy life together? My friend won't laugh at me like that. The worst mother ever. I know that you have a tough time after your father and I got divorced, but I tried my best. If you have a family, you will understand for me and my choice at that time. I always tried my best to provide what I could do for you. So where are you when I needed the most? Now if you want to prove what you are saying is true, give me the money as much as my husband's family give to us. How many? Oh, I have to say that you don't have that amount of money, anyway. Are you serious? All I want is just attend my daughter's wedding ceremony and congratulate her. That's all. If you can't give me that amount of money, you can't come. That's all. I'm sorry, but I don't think I can. Then never show yourself to me again. Ms. Parker! Are you really planning on not attending the wedding ceremony? Could you reconsider this? What? I heard from my wife that you plan to be absent from the wedding ceremony. But the family members is really important because it's once-in-lifetime event for her. Please be there for your daughter as her mother. Oh, but Lucifer told me not to come. So I can stand what you're texting now. She cried before me yesterday and told my family that her mom can't come. No, it's not the truth. She tell me not to come because I made her embarrassed. And I am not worth to come there. Why would Lucifer say such a thing to her own mother? That's unthinkable. I was thinking the same thing. I don't know your situation, but wouldn't it be possible to work out something so that you could attend our wedding? I am sure that she will be overjoyed if you could attend. I'm speechless. That's absolutely not what's going on. She said if I can give the, the amount of money as much as your parents give to you, I am allowed to come. I don't understand. Why would she ever say that to her mother? I am just as shocked as you are. No matter what my job was or what I had to do, I wouldn't miss this for the world. Naturally, I has planned to congratulate her from the bottom of my heart and also prepare some assets to give her. That is completely different story from the one I heard from my wife. I am pretend to come to hometown now, cause I have nothing to do here. I came here just to meet my daughter after a long time we was apart, but what I received made me so sad. Oh mom, you can't just come home like that. Can I meet you? I want to talk to you to make this clearly. Okay. Thank you so much for deciding to go to hometown. I fell so happy because you didn't make a fuss. But you left a very thin envelope with some money in it as my wedding gift. It was almost my salary. Oh, I am wrong to expect too much from the poor woman like you. It must be so miserable that you can't attend your daughter's wedding just because you are too poor. What words you say? I don't believe it. 
I am so terribly disappointed in you. I can't believe that my daughter would treat me like this. I worked so hard to bring you up properly. I feel like all my efforts and love were in vain. All those early mornings when I got up before you to make your lunchbox and prepare breakfast for you when you was in secondary school. Oh, but that's the responsibility the mother have to do. You don't have the right to say stuff like that. You should have made an effort to not divorce dad. I just want a family which I had both parents with me. People just assumed that I came from a poor family. What are you talking about? Who said such horrible things? Well, they didn't say those exact words, but I always got the feeling that what they really want to say. You're saying that you were embarrassed because you were different from everybody? I can't change the way I feel. I just want dad to be there with me. That's all. My daughter. I am going to be the daughter-in-law of a very rich family when I marry Peter. I will live as the doctor's wife in a big house with a big garden. Then Noon can talk about me in the negative way you know. And you will not be living in that kind of a world, Mom. Please never contact me again. Then I guess we can't get married. Lucifer, I am so shocked when read this text from you. Let's call it the wedding ceremony. I can't live with a person that just marry me because of my money. I guess I didn't love you enough to know about yourself. What? Who are texting with me? Is that Peter? Why can you take my mom's phone like this? I thought that mom are in the way to hometown now. It's unbelievable. What's going on here? I was having a conversation with my mom just now. I wanted to talk with your mom to find out the reason why she didn't come to our wedding. So I can see what happened directly. What? You told me that your mom can't attend our wedding because she's got a disease. But actually you told her to go home because she didn't have as much money as my parents. I knew all the truth. I can't believe you are that bad. That's disappointed me. This is all very shocking, but I'll get over it. I'm just glad I found this out because we had our weeding ceremony. At least it was a good thing. Wait, Peter, you need to listen to me. It's not the truth. Please, if you really love me, please hear me. We have been together for four years at the university, and I truly love you until now. I'm sure that if you know I am come from a family that doesn't have enough mom and dad, you will hate me. And even evaluated me like another friends of me. I so scared this is the reason that hinder the love of us. I just hate having the single parents. No, I don't think that's all. Then I must be so embarrassing to you since I have neither of my parents. I think if those are your standard of judging people, you and me are not in the same world. Sorry, but what you're saying now? We're not the same world. Here you are. I know you will react like this so I won't tell you about this kind of thing. Yes. I agree that you live in a gorgeous Massian with your handsome father and beautiful mother. You have a big house, a supercar and a pool, a big garden. That's dream of so many people. And how about me? My parents divorced when I was in high school. I lived alone in a new place to learn university. An 18 years old girl come to a new city without helping of her parents? She didn't have any friend because they thought she's poor. What a pity. I feel I am the poorest people in this world both about mental and financial. But that time I met you, the warmest person that I have met. I tried to flirt you and relied on you because you are the only one that I can talk to. And lucky for me that you love me too, I just want to USR my rest of life to live with you. 
the one who love me unconditionally and can give me everything. Oh, sweetie, I didn't know about what you have to gone through that time. I just think you need money for the university. Mom, you're coming back. Where is Peter? Peter was very moving when heard you talk about your real self and real feelings, so he's going ahead to your home now. Mom, but where are you now? I am sorry, Mom. I just care about my feeling and forget that you and Dad have tough time too. We weren't want that happen. I am so sorry, Mom. I hope that you can forgive for me. I love you, Mom. Please don't come back to hometown. I want you to come to my wedding. It's really an important event of my life. I want to meet you too, sweetie, and Peter was picking me up. Oh my God, thank you so much, Mom. I love you and I promise that I will never let you hurt again. Then Peter and Lucifer decide to get married and they have a happy life forever after. Her mom decided to open a food store near the school to sell food for students who didn't have the full fill family like Lucifer. Lucifer usually come to her mom's store to help with cooking. They have dinner together every weekend.